This is Dennis Mason with an LPAC update. The flooding ripping through the Mississippi and Ohio River basins gives us another opportunity. Do we demonstrate that we are worthy of keeping this republic and what that implies globally? Or do we take this opportunity to class ourselves amongst the beasts, helpless in the face of the elements, worth nothing more than the epithet or word epitaph of extinct, along with the great majority of the creatures which have walked this earth? How we deal with this period of crisis will set the pace for action on that question. Are we, the human species, fit to survive in this universe? If we can't use our current level of infrastructure, if we refuse to exploit our current economic platform to the fullest extent in defense of human life, against the effects of rain and melting snow of all things, if we can't do that, what does that say about our willingness to tackle the very real and quite imminent problem of the 62 million year biodiversity extinction cycle. And it's been a refusal. It's been a question of the willingness to take action. Everything we need to deal with this case of flooding is right at hand. Here we are with tons of unemployed citizens. We have the institutional framework in the form of the Army Corps of Engineers to put them back to work. And we have the potential credit to reliably finance the mission in the form of House Resolution 1489. Now, setting this into action would set the momentum, set the pace to begin to address the biodiversity extinction cycle crisis, if we but do it. Let's look at a particular case, the Birds Point Levee in Missouri, where the Ohio and the mighty Mississippi meet. Three states of our union border this junction, Missouri, Illinois, and Kentucky. Reportedly, the policy of the Army Corps of Engineers is to intentionally blow the levee if the river reaches a flood level of a half foot over 60 at the Gage Up River in Cairo, Illinois. Doing this would ease pressure on the riverway as a whole. In 1928, the Corps designated the area at Birds Point as a floodway after attending to major flooding in 27. This floodway hasn't been used since 1937. Now, at the time, as FDR was taking the helm, the Corps was looking at the Ohio-Mississippi system as a whole, which is a subject beyond the scope of this present report, designing a water management program for the entirety of the riverway. Now, this was left only partially complete, with the lower Mississippi left unattended. Now, if the project as a whole, as started under FDR, would have been complete by 2005, where would we have been when Hurricane Katrina hit? Now, at last report, there's litigation pending initiated by Missouri, which would prevent the Corps of Engineers from executing their policy of water management. Now, this seems to raise a couple of questions. What has happened to us, to our culture and people, that we hesitate to use our current level of infrastructure, that we flat refuse to exploit our current economic platform to the fullest extent in defense of the general welfare of human life, in defense from, of all things, rain and melting snow? And as this particular crisis comes to a head, never mind the ongoing tornado season and the fires sweeping through the Southwest, both of which can have grave consequences on this fall's harvest if we refuse to act now, and never mind the known potential for seismic volcanic activity in the far West and elsewhere, the which we refuse to prepare for, never mind the fact that hurricane season isn't even here yet, to say nothing of the grave financial crisis which grips us all, Where's the president? After all, the chain of command on executing command decisions in the interest of providing for the common defense, for promotion of the general welfare, this chain of command ends at the desk of the Oval Office. And where the hell is he? Is our president of these United States off playing a pickup game for the umpteenth thousandth time? He sure talks about it enough. Hey, Barry, you know what they call a bad bank shot, right? Now, another outstanding question in the case here is what do we do if we do go ahead and blow that levee at Bird's Point and utilize the floodway? What do we do once the waters recede? Now, a reason cited by the Grand State of Missouri for an injunction on that action is the effect of flooding out the Bird's Point farmland, and it seems to be a legitimate concern. But Missouri is not alone. As we've reported here at LPAC, many states have been hit by these storms on that account. Now, put that together with the nasty, evil policy of putting corn, that's food, into your gas tank so you can sit in the rush hour traffic jam inhaling the fumes, hating on thy neighbor. 
what kind of world are we going to come to live in come harvest time if you don't do everything in your power to ensure that Glass-Steagall comes to a vote right now? And it's not a question of support. If this bill for reinstatement came up for a vote in its present form of House Resolution 1489, first thing when these guys get back to D.C., it would pass. And the people want it too. From our organizing on the streets, we know that as soon as the American citizen gets a smell of what Glass-Steagall actually represents, it's a no-brainer. It's across the board, as they say. But you can have all the support in the world. You can have every member of Congress co-sponsor this bill. All of that means absolutely nothing if it doesn't come up for a vote and return to its rightful place as a truly just law of our republic. This is a question of guts, pure and simple. Do we... The people represented in the halls of Congress have the guts to fight this one out, to fight Wall Street, to fight the Fourth Roman Empire, really, and to fight Obama on this. Yeah, he'll probably veto it, but so what? He does that and his career is over. Here we are in a war against empire, as far as monetarism goes, and in a war against Gaia, a war to defeat that final plague called extinction. And the guy at the top? Well, he's nothing more than an empty uniform. As this crisis unfolds, he's just not there. I mean, sure, he'll be there physically. He'll give press conferences. He'll say what he thinks and perceives are the right things to be said at the right places. But today, as water pours into the breach, good people, our citizens, are going to get killed. And tomorrow, when we go to harvest a crop that isn't there, a lot of good people here and abroad are going to die because of the inaction of this man called President of these United States today. Pass Glass-Steagall now. Throw this asshole out on the streets and let's get about the business of this nation. There's lots to do and plenty of work for all of us. This is Dennis Mason, signing off.